Hey guys, so today we're going to be making a marble calculator. Why, though? You speak when spoken to! Jesus! <laughs> Sorry, where were we? Right, marble calculators. This video actually turned out to be much more educational than I first intended, so get ready to learn some shit. So the goal is to make a calculator that which can add two numbers using only marbles and physics and stuff. So to build the world's least efficient calculator, first we are going to need to know how a normal calculator works, and before we can do that, we're gonna need to learn how binary works. <sighs> Bloody hell. Okay, let's begin with binary. Binary is just the encoding of numbers when you can only use ones and zeros. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. All right, you figured it out yet? No. Fantastic. Okay, moving on. <laughs> so in actual calculators and computers and shit, a one is represented by electricity going through a wire, and a zero is no electricity passing through that wire. All right, making progress. So if you wanted to represent the number five, which is one zero one, you would have three wires with electricity running through the first and last wire. Simple enough. Now let's talk marbles. Instead of a one being represented by electricity going through a wire, we have a marble going down a tube or lane or whatever. So this is five, this is eight, this is two, this is zero, this is 12. Y you get it. All right, let's run the calculator. Wow, wasn't that fun? <laughs> Okay, the problem is we need the lanes to interact with each other. To do this, we need to use what is known as logic gates. These gates dictate what happens when two lanes collide. So the first one I want to look at is the AND gate. So all logic gates have inputs and outputs. For AND gates, the output will be one if both the inputs are one. All right, let's label this. We got inputs A and B and outputs C. If A AND B are one and then C is one, you, you get it, it's an AND gate. Boom, logic, done knowledge. All right, simple enough. Let's bring it back to marbles. An AND gate needs to output a marble if it receives marble in both inputs. So here is my version of an AND gate. Well, this was my first attempt anyway. So the first marble to come down will fill the little hole and then the second one will roll over it and continue down. Thus, the gate is outputting a one only when there are marbles going down both lanes. However, the solution wasn't very robust as sometimes the first marble was able to jump over the hole and also it wasn't quite ridiculous enough for this project. So here is AND gate 2.0. What a beauty. So the marble in the top lane can't go through until the marble in the bottom lane has knocked out another marble holding up the barrier, preventing the top marble from getting through. Hell yeah. Moving on. Next logic gate we have is an OR gate. This should produce a marble if either of the input lanes have a marble. If A or B is one, then C is one. So here she is. This one's pretty simple. Just if either lanes have a marble, then it will knock the marble down and thus the output will be one. Very nice. Next up is a NOT gate, which just outputs the opposite of the input. Wait a second. These gates dictate what happens when two lanes collide. You lied to me. <laughs> yeah, okay, this gate only requires one lane. I'm sorry. Please don't go. No! Sorry, where, where was I? Yes, not gates. This one was actually really hard to implement because if nothing comes down the lane, then you're supposed to release a marble. So I had a timer which waits for a certain amount of time. If nothing has come through once the timer is up, then it will release a marble. So if, wait, I... Hang on, I'll just show you. <laughs> Here it is. Okay, so we've got a marble already in the gate, slowly approaching the exit. If a marble comes through the input, then the output will be blocked. If nothing comes through, then the marble in the starting gate will reach the output. Therefore, if the input is one, then the output is zero. And if the input is zero, then the output is one. It's a not gate, baby. <laughs> Dawn. Now we have AND gates, OR gates, and NOT gates. So using this, we can build a calculator, sort of. We actually need a few more things, but we're getting really close. These things are much less important. They just kind of make things easier. Sometimes you need to duplicate a lane into two lanes. So I made what I called a duplicator. One goes in, two goes out. It's simple stuff. Also, because most of this is gravity based, you lose altitude quick. So I added an elevator which releases a ball above it. And with that, we can finally do this. So how does addition in binary actually work? Well, let's just look at adding single digit binary numbers. So if both A and B are zero, then A plus B is also zero. If A is one and B is zero, then A plus B is one. Same with zero plus one. If both A and B are one, then A plus B is two. But we can't have to wait. Shit, everyone panic. The singularity is all becoming coming so <laughs> No, actually, you can just carry the one. Oh, sorry. So our adder needs to take in two inputs, A and B, and produce two outputs. One which is the sum and one which is the carry. So if A and B are one, then the output would be zero carry one. Okay, so enough teasing. Here is the adder. Let's put it to the test. One plus zero equals... Oh, he's done it. So adding zeros and ones and stuff is fantastic and all, but we want to add bigger numbers to make it an actual calculator. The best way to explain this is just to do some math. Just normal everyday math with big numbers in it like two. 
So let's add 582 plus 946. This is pretty hard to do in your head, so we developed a method for doing sums. First you look at the rightmost digits, then you add them, so 2 plus 6 is 8, then we look at the digits 1 to the left and repeat. 4 plus 8 is 12, but we can't write 12, so we write 2 and carry the 1. Then it's 5 plus 9 plus the 1 we carried, which is 15, then we write down the 5, carry the 1, and the 1 is the only number in the 4th digit line, so we just write down the 1. Wow, okay, I didn't think I'd be doing primary school level math, but it will be relevant, I swear. I know your attention spans can't handle this, so here's a picture of a pug. Oh, it's so bloody cute. Okay, moving on. Now let's do it with binary numbers. I would do the same numbers, but this is 946 in binary, so let's do some smaller numbers, like 7 plus 5. So we do it exactly the same as the previous example. So first go to the rightmost digits, then do, we do 1 plus 1, which is 2 or 1, 0 in binary. So we write down the 0 and carry the 1. Next is 1 plus 1 again, so we write down the 0 carry the 1. 1. Next one is 1 plus 1 plus 1, which was carried, which is 3 and 1, 1 in binary. So write down the 1, carry the 1, which just gets written down as 1. So we get 1, 1, 0, 0, which is 12, which is 5 plus 7. Okay, so we need to implement this method of addition using only marbles. <sighs> Why am I doing this again? Also, if you notice during the addition thing, sometimes you need to add three numbers, one from the first number, one from the second number, and also a carried number. It's hard to add three numbers using our adder, which can only add two numbers, and one which can add three is much more complicated because of course it is. We can do it with the gates we've already implemented, but it's a little easier if we introduce a new gate. And you know how each of the gates had names which were very intuitive, like and and or and not? Well, introducing the XOR gate. This outputs a one if either input is one, but not if both inputs are one. So if A or B, but not A and B. So here she is. If just one of the inputs comes down, then it will knock the ball, which will slowly reach the exit. But if both come down, then they'll block off the exit. Okay, XOR gate done. We are ready, <laughs> finally. So this is the full adder, which can add three binary numbers. So let's try out one plus one plus one. Yeah, nice, now we're talking. So now our full calculator will consist of three adders, meaning it can add three digit binary numbers. I could make it bigger, but yeah, nah, that's not happening. So let's start with the example we used before, which was seven plus five. So seven is one, 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 five is one, zero, one. All right, let's do it. Ready? Oh! Yes! We did it! That's 12, baby. We got it. We got it. What's next? I'm not creative enough to think of numbers. We got... What's that? Three plus... Uh... Six. Three plus six. What you got?
It's happening. Yes! 1009 coming up. Yeah! <laughs> Touchdown. <laughs> Bloody marble calculate. You have no idea how much effort this took. <laughs> Also, if you want to test out this calculator yourself, uh, link will be in the description. You can just play it in your browser. I don't know why you'd want to use it. It's awful and uh, works about 60% of the time. But yeah, no, have, have fun, I suppose, if you're into excruciatingly slow calculators <laughs> that don't work all the time and can only add numbers up to seven, then go for your life. Uh, do I have the products for you? <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry this video took ages to make, mainly because first of all I'm at uni, second of all I was trying to build a marble bloody calculator and that takes its time. So, yeah, sorry, sorry this one took a while. It was a lot more art than it was science, which is, you know, <laughs> you've seen my ability at art and so, yeah. Look, live and learn. But yeah, I, I am back at uni now, so I won't be able to make as many videos. I will still be making videos, don't you worry. Still got awesome plans to come. Awesome plans to come, is that how you say it? Awesome things to come that I'm planning. Yeah, that'll do. Um, so bye. Yeah. See ya.